welcome to GQ India's Food and Drink Festival. And what a set of guests we have with us today. They're both true pioneers, entrepreneurs who saw an opportunity and took it, riding India's great lifestyle boom. Today, we're talking about pride and passion in this specially themed session called Why I Got Into the Restaurant Business. This conversation is presented by Ballantines, which believes that greatness is bestowed upon individuals who stay true to their convictions, even if that means taking the path less traveled. My first panelist is someone I hugely respect for his vision, drive, and laser focus on delicious food. I first met him in the early 2000s when he had just launched Mocha at its iconic location at Churchgate. Today, his company, Impresario, runs over 60 restaurants across the country, including Social, Smokehouse Deli, and what was, in my opinion, India's most magical restaurant, Saltwater Grill, on the beach, overlooking the princess's necklace on Marine Drive. Welcome to the show, Riaz. Thank you so much, Shay. Good to be here. My second guest is an absolute titan. He's a Bombay boy who started from scratch in the early 90s with just desserts and has gone on to launch a slew of restaurants and food brands. He's the founder of Olive, which celebrates its 20th anniversary this year and is known for his instinctive understanding of the power of celebrity, style, and the personal touch. Welcome to the program, AD. AD, I want you to take us back in time to when you started. How did you see the future and the opportunity? And uh, tell us you know, about those early days of Just Desserts. It was a small restaurant in Fort. You know, what was the landscape like? Uh, you know, what were people's attitudes like? And what did you see differently from everyone else around you? Let me start with a slightly funny story of how I got going. See, my old families, we have no entrepreneurs in my family. My father was a Hindustan leader for most of his life. And I was following in his path. And I was really happy at Cadbury's where I was doing computers. But I realized that it wasn't me, this wasn't where I wanted to go. I couldn't see myself down the road. And so I stepped back and tried to figure out who am I and what should I be doing? I could never have done it without my parents' support because I was totally, you know, uh, mom and dad bound, or whatever they said. So I sat them down and I said, you know, I'd like to talk to you and they said, sure, sure, and they sat right down. And I started talking about my desire to leave Capri's and MNC life and step out into the unknown. And to my vast surprise, they were like, oh, that's great, son. Love it. Go for it. Yes, you must. So much so, Jay, I, I thought to Adil from some sort of cheap drugs and alcohol because I wasn't expecting that level of support. But it turned out much later that I was dating a girl. They really didn't like very much. And when I said sit down, they were very worried I was going to tell them that I was about to marry her. Anything after that was such a relief. I got their full support. And that's how I, I, my journey towards becoming an entrepreneur started. Relevantly to this particular discussion, how did I get into food business? Surprisingly, I'm actually, um, I don't have a great palate. Uh, it wasn't a great foodie. I'd say Riyaz, for example, would be with a much sharper palate, sense, and appreciation of food that we But what I did have was a sweet tooth. And so I dreamt about having a place where you could get all these great desserts by the slice and affordable prices. My own dream, basically. And uh, came through with some ideas that I picked up from things I was reading at that time. There was no internet. And it all came together and we got lucky. I found that Parisian cafe in Fort and that's how Just the Dust was born. And I was a total rookie, but I was lucky I brought Raul a kid for our goal and another old friend, Naomi. And uh, because it was so new and I think what people were looking for but didn't have at all, it was a smashing success from day one. And that's how my love for the restaurant started and my journey began as well. Fantastic. Riaz, you started Mocha a decade later. Uh, it was a different time. India's economy was starting to shine. 
people were eating out a lot more, being more experimental. How did you see the opportunity? 20 years ago, I think it was a, it was a completely different time. And, uh, you know, I, I actually uh, look at restaurants in, in two very distinct eras. Uh, one is before AD and then one is after AD because AD <laughs> really, uh, yeah, so, so be AD and, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so AD really, you know, really brought the glamour in the restaurant business and he brought lifestyle in the restaurant business. Of course, before that, you had all the, um, uh, you had the Gaylord variety of restaurants, which was very, very good and very charming. We all had Indian, Chinese and continental and uh, the menu pretty much read the same. And uh, we had Gaylords, we had Society, uh, Berries um, and what else? Gallops maybe, perhaps, were the, were the kind Talk of restaurants of that came up. Talk of the town, absolutely. And they all had lovely bands with Usha Uthap and Ajit Singh, uh, who used to come and perform. And I have vague recollections when my father used to take me to these places. But it really brought the, the glamorous aspect of, of restauranting and made it really sexy for everybody else to follow and made it absolutely cool. And like Eddie said, he brought in uh, some, he brought in something that people had not seen before. And I think that it was easier back then in a while to actually make a mark because there was there was fewer options and you know things that you did well caught the attention of people really well and I actually stumbled upon the restaurant business I was uh, I had a shoe shop uh, where I was a shoe salesman before that I was working in some other shop and I had no idea I wanted to be in the restaurant business absolutely no clue my father owned a restaurant and that was my only he was not actively involved in the management. So my only uh, kind of, I never really entertained the thought of being in the restaurant business someday. Um, I, I was fascinated by the entertainment industry because I thought that in a city like Bombay, I'm talking back in 1995, we didn't really have too many options to commune with the city or to interact with the city, right? We could go up and down drives on Marine Drive or Worli, and if we were feeling very adventurous, come to Bandra. And uh, that was that was the entertainment. We could go to single hall uh, movie theaters, and we could go to you know one out of five or six restaurants. Um, so I really thought we didn't have too much by way of entertainment. So uh, I went, studied entertainment management, came back, was very keen to set up entertainment centers. I uh, briefly brushed shoulders with Adi for the first time during the setup of the bowling company, which he pioneered. Uh, it was a twenty. Uh, alley bowling alley so 20 uh, lane bowling alley uh, which he created and I was setting up a uh, little little entertainment uh, equipment and monitoring systems and what have you so AD and my pass actually crossed at that point of time and um, what I started seeing in these entertainment centers were whether people came for the entertainment or not they would hang around uh, the, the little cafeteria which was selling really bad chutney sandwiches and the same old, you know, espresso machine which was called in those days and we all thought cappuccinos were espressos because they were frothy. And uh, from from that on, I, I just started seeing that no matter what happened, people would come and eat and drink. And I started realizing that, you know, eating and drinking is actually the biggest form of entertainment now in our country and it still is. Uh, it is still it's, it's 24 times the size of Bollywood. People go out for entertainment. So my journey actually came from more from the entertainment side where I realized that people just needed a place to hang out where they could get a cup of coffee and a dessert. Or, and uh, we started off with mocha, which and I, I didn't know how to cook then. I don't know how to cook now. So really, I don't know where you're getting your thoughts about me <laughs> having a refined palate. Not true. I will eat anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it just started off with that. It, it really, the, I, I had no idea about restauranting. It was I, I was I just got the best coffee the world had to offer, and I started outsourcing desserts from four or five different home dessert makers at that point of time, and that was it. And uh, that's my journey. It started off with a very simple restaurant called Mocha, and then one thing led to another. Adi, I'd like to talk a little bit about Olive. As an idea, it anticipated many things. Uh, the growth of Juhu and Bandra, the rise of the entertainment industry, a nascent celebrity culture. 
It was the place where movie stars, socialites, designers all came together. And it all felt so fresh and new. And you were at the center of it all. You were the master of ceremonies. What are some of your favorite memories? <laughs> if I shared all my greatest memories, I'd probably be sued. The show wouldn't be allowed to be aired. You have to realize that three hours of this day, it was also fresh that time, too. You know, we, so everybody really felt very natural that it all hang out. And uh, it was much more innocent uh, to the early days. Um, so, of course, you know, most of the, the biggest stars that ruled Bollywood all live in that area and then have now moved even further north because that's where the studios and the work is. And they, because of who they are, where they traveled, uh, the sort of earnings there were very sophisticated had a certain level of palette, et cetera. And for them, they really wanted experiences like they were seeing all over the world. So when Olive came along, it was a natural hub for them. And everybody used to, uh, you know, almost live there for the first few years. Uh, and of course, many funny stories from there. As I said, some I can't repeat, but a couple of them. Um, one was, when Rishi Kapoor's son came back from studies, Rishi introduced him to me. He used to be there, I think, most Sundays, uh, he and Mandir. And he introduced his son who's come back, wanting to get into Bollywood. And I was thinking, what a kid, how's he ever going to make it? And you know, our Thursday nights at Olive are legendary. And a Thursday or two later, Randi was uh, at the, and he was hanging around. I don't want to name him. But one of the biggest stars we have now and had 10, 20 years ago. And that star didn't know who he was. So he finally got irritated, picked him up, and was about to put him into our fish pond. When his brothers, who happened to be there as well, came running and said, Stop, stop, he's Rishi, I'm afraid they have a Rishi uncle's son. And so, you know, he stepped back and dusted the Ranbir off, went to meet Rishi the next day, he gave, I think, a very good point. He watches a prison to make up. Uh, and that's really how Rambi in his early days got going and, and met everybody. Rishi still laughs though, when we last met shortly before. He still had a good laugh over that memory. The same star was wooing uh, an actress who moved here, who's still one of our biggest and loveliest actresses. And one day, apparently, they were fighting. And so she came in with the girl pals, center table. He came in with his guys at the bar. And after a wire chain, he started to whirl like they do in the movie. She put a rose between his teeth and he's dancing in front of a table, smiling, dancing back, smiling. The entire restaurant is gobsmacked. You know what the hell's going on? Her girl pals are giggling. And so after a bit of that, it broke the ice. But it was uh, remarkable to see that. Also, if you remember, this was actually widely circulated. When Hrithik first came out and became fairly big, there was a lot of media, I think unfairly, creating this huge uh, you know, competition between Shahrukh and Hrithik and how they can't stand each other and he's taking his space, blah, blah, blah. A few nights later, Shahrukh standing at a table, Hrithik walked in. The whole restaurant stopped, held its breath, and waited for some fireworks, fight, something that was media created a mortal combat scenario. Shahrukh got up, walked to Hrithik, Hrithik walked towards him. Audience holding his breath. They gave each other a huge hug and some nice words and then parted ways. And everybody couldn't believe it. But that was really the reality, you know. Um, most of our stars, um, I, I think exactly like us, real people, ups, down, some insecurity, insecurity, but not what they made out to be by media. And we've seen that over and over again. Riaz, apart from the delicious food that you serve, you also get credit for presenting the idea of regional cuisine from different areas and, and parts of India onto one menu. 
as well as incorporating local and quirky design sensibilities into your restaurants. Um, working with the likes of Ayaz Basrai, for example. What are some of the ideas that you're most proud of? So I think, uh, you know, along the way, we kind of realized it took a while for the Indian consumer to really show himself or herself uh, to us restaurateurs. Right? We, we always have a, a perception of a vibe of a restaurant where we kind of tend to forget uh, what we really enjoy and what our, real, our, our palates really are. And I think we went through this whole journey. Right? Uh, Indian food was not sexy uh, a long, uh, you know, when we started off. It was almost, uh, you, you thought about Indian food, you thought about butter chicken and you thought about dal makhani and thought of naan and you thought of heavy, you know, non-date food. I mean, come on, you can't take a date to... Uh, because, you know, after that, there's no chance. So, um, <laughs> so you know, as, as a precursor to the evening, uh, the restaurants tended to be, you know, e e European in nature to begin with. Uh, and then they kind of started moving slowly, slowly oriental to concern first. But Indian was really the last to kind of become sexy. And, you know, I, I, I uh, many ways, thanks to the efforts of uh, uh, Manish Manotra and what Indian accent was able to achieve. I think, uh, you know, and, and of course, Gagan in, in Bangkok and so Amma Evening, Michelin stars in London. Slowly, slowly, you know, Indian food really came back into uh, into the cool quotient, right? But you have to also be mindful because you're creating a trend. Uh, you don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Uh, so shall we, I really, the thought was really when we were creating Mocha was the same. How do we create a place where people can hang out and just and not not at any particular time it can't be related to lunch or dinner it has to be morning it it can be evening it can be late evening early evening and even after dinner you know how can a place be relevant so for for us our real focus was coffee shops and cafes because we really believe that that is it can can be more a part of your daily lives so Cafes were always the number one focus for us. Mocha was about coffee and conversation. And we used to try and say that we want to create a space conducive for conversation. And conversation being the main offering on our menu. And uh, I think me and AD both, uh, I think, kind of uh, agree on that. That, you know, the space is even AD is all about laughter and sangria and, and conversation. And for us also, it was about that. And I think that... As the generations changed from Mocha, where, where we went from catering to Gen Xers uh, and to, to a completely new generation, which was looking for a completely different cafe experience, I think social came about. And I think the generation flipped at that point of time, and it was more about people rediscovering uh, who their, their identities, uh, you know, in a way that they were almost proud of their identity and not ashamed of it. And I think... Uh, our Gen Xers went on for a very long time period, you know, hiding our Indianness, in a sense. And I think that we really now come to a point where we've come to appreciate all that we offer, and we we've come to realize how sophisticated and evolved our palettes were. Earlier, we were kind of disparaging towards our palettes, but I think now we've realized that our palettes are way more sophisticated than some of the best chefs in the West. Like I am always marveling at my mother's ability to, from thirty-two different spices, say, "Ye come in. You know, and it's, it's amazing. It's mind-boggling to be able to think like that. So uh, our ability to deal with so much different spice and get the balances right is, is incredible. So I think that uh, we came about at the right time. So, yeah, you know, social is something I'm very, very proud about. Um, I, I also love Prithvi Cafe. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know we run that space. But uh, we managed to try and keep the soul alive of that space even after many many years it was started off with Pralat Kakkar I believe and made, made this Irish coffee famous uh, and, and still today we have you know uh, people rehearsing their plays you know suddenly suddenly your, your guy sitting next to you on your table will get up and start screaming and then you realize he's only reciting a line from a play uh, oh and we <laughs> we'll still have a flautist coming in uh, most evenings and people sit around with their chai and glucose biscuits and and four square cigarettes. And I think there's, there's still something magical about those places. Um, another place which I had created, which I was very proud of for, for myself, was a restaurant called Smokehouse Room in Delhi, uh, which you know, it was, it was uh, 
it was show offy and it was a little bit of a cathedral to my own ego and uh, it didn't do well at all uh, we got it was one of our biggest disasters but uh, also it was what what made me realize that that the indian audience uh, is 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 peculiar is unprecedented is you know and you must give people what they want in a manner that they will love not what you want and what you love so i think that that was a little bit of a of a learning uh, process or a journey for me and um, yeah so we retire now and try and find uh, you know our own unique uh, uh, paradigm to uh, hospitality and i think that's very very exciting because given you know the depth of our uh, culinary exposure given the fact that we are we are so exposed we be part of so many different civilizations uh, cultures that have actually and and so diverse you know from the northeast to the south to the north to the east it's just amazing i think that um, it's an exciting time for indian restaurants and i think the world is ready now for uh, the indian brand of restauranting Shri, I want to add to what Riaz was saying. Go For ahead. our viewers, I think it might be very relevant. You know, Riaz and me are two of the, you know, considered to be very successful restaurateurs in this country. I thought you were going to say oldies. I was just <laughs> bracing myself. <on> that. <laughs> But as Riaz just uh, confessed very honestly, we both have also had our share of failures. That's what we've learned a lot from. We're still I'm still closing restaurants even today, um, and I think for a while, one thing that I'm especially for our viewers, many of whom are restauranters or would be restauranters, is to realize our business is gorgeous, it's a huge future, it's glamorous. We love it, we're passionate about it, but be careful. Go slow. It's easy to fail in our business, uh, and if you do fail. There's no shame in that, because even we are failing, still failing, we'll probably still fail tomorrow. But just keep learning. And as Ria said, it's not so much about what we want. I think the reason both Ria and I have had many of the successes is because the products were things that we could believe in and we were passionate about, and there was an audience that it really resonated with as well. However, both of us also have had to keep learning along the way. How audiences are changing, what they're looking for. Think we really tweak our own thinking to create our newer products, and that will always be part of, of the journey as well. And I'd say at this point, for both of us, I'd say for all of us, we're so happy to see the way the industry is going, and we want to say good luck to all of you. AD it says that success comes to those who are true to themselves who are authentic and comfortable in their own skin do you agree with that and how is this insight played out in your life so che che ria said something about being true to the soul of prithvi and especially you know now you see around you so many restaurants that are coming up overnight some day an idea or get to location it just sees an opportunity to make money they think But they have to understand that both our cases, and many more, like Manish, who we have mentioned, many more. We spent a very long time on putting these restaurants together. What are they about? What's their identity? What do they believe in? What are we trying to do with them? In short, what's the soul of this space? As we go through, I mean, I don't know how many socials there are. I guess they're going very well. The product with a big future, but what I think is really the true mark of it is that we are trying very hard with every one of those that they must have their soul intact through design, through operation, through freshness. I do the same with the various brands we have as they grow as well. Our olives now are, are 20 years old. The first one, others 15, 17, 13. They are more successful than they ever were. But that's because I've got some great people with me, and so we work very hard in keeping them true to why we started them, what they stand for, what we believe in. If you don't get that right, a customer could go anywhere else, and there are many choices today. So, in response to what Chase is saying, be clear what you're trying to do. 
try and deliver that as well as you can and then keep to that. It's really for me to walk into a restaurant that's trying to do everything, play all sorts of music, so all food, etc. I think once your USB made, how long will you be able to last like this? You can't only last by trying to get the cheapest this or the cheapest that. So I think the authenticity, vision, time to get your product right uh, is very, very important in this marketplace and will continue to do so. Because I want to bring you in here. Um, you know, the restaurant business is about trends and trendiness and what's hot. Uh, but I want to ask you the, the importance of heart, of instinct, and sometimes going against the grain. Um, well, first of all, shout out to Edie because 20 years for a restaurant now is just, it just, it blows your mind, right? Um, starting, a, a starting a new restaurant from scratch is the easy part, right? Coming up with, with uh, a new idea is the easy part. Honestly, uh, keeping something sustained and fresh and, and still relevant in, in our lives uh, to a different generation, to a different uh, set of people uh, and to continue keep, uh, you know, keeping that, that flow yet being able to reinvent yourself to be relevant is, is to me is, 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 is the magic, is the, is the real secret, is the real art, so to speak, is the real sorcery. Uh, and uh, I think it, what AD does really, really well is when he makes a restaurant, it's, it's very deep, right? And when I say deep, I mean it's tacked deep, which means that uh, right from uh, when you enter in, uh, the first smell that you get, the first musical notes that you hear, uh, from how your footsteps feel on the gravel to, uh, you know, how the, the, the tables feel to your hands. So every, or every bit of this tactile experience or the things that you can see or hear or smell, it kind of stacks up into this one really coherent offering, you know, which is which is what what I think good restaurants should be. You know, they're all like a notes of a chord. They all have to resonate at the same frequency. You have anything that's off, immediately the customer catches on, whether he knows it or not, whether he he's able to enunciate that or not, he will feel it, right? So the you the ability to create restaurants which have real uh, soul, real depth. I think that's the secret, I think, for a, for a restaurant that lasts really, really long uh, in this business. Uh, when it comes to having trends, I, I really believe that when you're creating a restaurant, you really have to choose uh, who you're talking to and why you're talking to them and why you're relevant in their lives. What is the role that you will fulfill in, in their lives? Right? There are some restaurants you go to to feel elegant. Uh, there's some restaurants you go to feel sophisticated, right? There's some restaurants you go to feel warm and gooey, and there's some restaurants you just want to go and pig out, and some restaurants you want to wear your best Sunday best and go, and some restaurants you want to go in your your flip flops and your pajamas and your your. And I think that having uh, you know trying to be true to that particular mood space is very very important. You have to be very very clear. I'm, I, this is the mood space which I am going after, right? Because we are, where decisions that people make when they go to a restaurant is very mood oriented. Aaj uh, Indian khane ka man hai. I feel like Chinese today. I want to have a beer and a burger today. I want to dress up really nice and I want to go to a nice place today. Uh, I want to go to a relaxed place, you know. Just 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 have a chat with my friends. So that, that is the mood space that your restaurant really has to own and communicate and, and keep refreshing itself on the similar lines. So I think that um, when I was starting off, uh, AD uh, and Rahul Akirka uh, were, were my big inspirations. And uh, like many other you know people, I, I borrowed uh, freely from them until I started you know creating my own voice and started having understanding the business a little bit better. And I think that that's also what I've seen the journey of many young restauranters as well. Uh, they, they do tend to borrow from things that have been successful, but and if they're able to survive, uh, you know, this this minefield, then they're able to start developing their voices and start emerging as better and better restauranters because it, it takes a little while to hone your craft and to truly come into your own, uh, you know, brand of restauranting, so to speak, or you have your own brand of craft. Uh, uh, which is evolving. And I think that 
restaurants have to manage many balls in the air uh, from making sure you know every day is a theater every day is a performance you can't you can't afford to put your your you know, can't afford missteps you have to train you have to supervise on a daily basis but at the same time you have to be very clued in to the contemporary culture and at least for me you know as i grow a little older i find myself a little bit more removed from uh, the millennials and now uh, the, the the new generation the gen z's uh, so to speak the genies uh, you you start moving away from that but you have to stay relevant you have to understand what they want uh, you have to kind of find ways of of uh, you know being called a dirty old man and get involved in those little millennial gangs and and really live their life to be able to be relevant to those lives so I think it's about being relevant to a little slice of your customer's life. You know, Riaz, what is the one thing that you have learned from AD? Oh my God, everything! I think uh, it's just hard to, <laughs> hard to, uh, yeah, really. I mean, like I said, you know, it's just been an inspiration, and we've, we've uh, learned so much from him. He's literally, he's he's the giant whose shoulders I'm standing on, AD. If you have any spinal problems, you know, call. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's he's literally led the way uh, for for all of India. You know, he's uh, created uh, institutions and he's he's brought in glamour. He's, he's he's shown what it takes to build a restaurant and the attention to detail, um, the ability to keep it fresh, uh, uh, his ability to to take great talent and you know really utilize their full potential. I mean, every great person in in, in uh, hospitality today has been through the stables of A.D. Singh. I'm not referring to your uh, restaurant at the race course. Uh, I'm talking about... <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you, you name it. I mean, such phenomenal talent. Uh, you, you know, just Manu Chandra, even, even Zach from uh, Bombay Canteen now, Sabi. Uh, just he's just he's a spiritual grandfather and father to many of the restaurants that are there now. So, yeah. And Edie, what is the one thing you admire about Riaz? I, um, you know, I stumbled into being a restauranter, as I said, because of my sweet tooth, and because I started so early, I learned a lot along the way. With Riaz, as Riaz mentioned, we've known each other, we've crossed paths for a long time. I've seen his journey and what I really admire about him and I wish I had some of those skills was that he brings to the industry the same things as I bring, you know, a passion, a personality, a sense of humor, warmth, all that. Um, but I also think that he is a better business head with that effort Riyaz made and then followed by a couple of other very uh, brilliant, hardworking restauranters. Our restaurant association has now become, um, you know, really strong for all of us together. It's changed the way everybody in the industry fraternizes with each other, or looks out for each other. And the way the industry is viewed by government and by much of the, of the wider world in this country. And I'd say people like Riazmi and a few others who are really we tried very hard to represent our world outside concerns, worries, way forward, etc. And uh, I, I, you know, as I said, I've been watching this industry now for almost 30, 30 years actually this year. And it's fantastic the way it's changed in the last four years, starting with uh, the other students. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Keep doing what you're doing inspiring us with your ideas and your passion. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Che. All the best for the GP really? Food and Drink Festival as well. Thank you all for tuning in and enjoy the rest of GQ's Food and Drink Festival. Here's to the uncommon ones. The unflinching. And the undaunted. Unstoppable. Undistracted. Untypical, unchallenged, unswayed. Here's to the unorthodox and their undying spirit. Undisputed gods of a new world. Valentine's. Stay true.